Hi, I'm Mark Force from the EA Workshops, and today I'd like to speak about uh, some different layup methods for laying out a fiberglass when you're building your composite project. A lot of times what you'll be doing when you're laying up a composite project is you'll be bonding two pieces together. A typical uh, example like this would be a T-joint, where we uh, install a fillet with a resin microsphere mixture and then lay up a couple layers of glass on top of that to bond things in place. There's a couple different ways to do that. One way is to take the fiberglass, materials like this, and apply it to the joint and then using a brush or a squeegee uh, apply the resin to the glass. That's okay, uh, but there's some troubles with that if you have tight quarters or perhaps you have an overhead where the glass or the joint is uh, up high and you're applying the glass to the joint, difficult to get to, you have issues with the uh, resin perhaps dripping on you, that sort of thing. So I'd like to uh, talk about a method that you can use to uh, essentially pre-impregnate your fiberglass with the resin before you actually start the layup. It's called a pre-preg. Now in the industrial side of, of composites works, uh, pre-preg is a fairly involved and a very expensive type material. Uh, there are special controlled conditions you have to use it under. This is kind of a homemade pre-preg. So let's talk about how we do that. Uh, first of all, we have our couple layers of glass. Uh, in this case, we're just going to lay up two layers of uh, uh, fiberglass. This is a 7781, which is a, a typical glass that is used uh, for bonding uh, joints like this together. So we have our glass. Uh, we have a bag that we'll use for this process. Uh, some scissors, a ruler, a sharpie, we'll use a squeegee, and of course resin, and uh, of course very important appropriate safety precautions. We want to use uh, uh, safety goggles or glasses and make sure that your hands are mechanically protected from the resin. So in this case, we'll use a pair of latex gloves. So I'll get suited up here. Okay, and then we have our resin, which I've pre-mixed off on the side here. We'll just kind of uh, get that going here. So we're all set. We have our glass, we have our resin. A uh, little plastic bag. Uh, this is uh, just about any kind of sandwich bag that you can find in a, a, a food store. Uh, you want to get a bag in terms of thickness, uh, the thickness of the plastic, a little heavier duty bag, uh, perhaps a, a freezer storage bag or something like that. If you go to the thinner uh, sandwich bags, you tend to have problems with the plastic kind of bundling up or scrunching up uh, when you're squeegeeing. So we take our bag and we will actually place the uh, glass in the bag and then take our resin and actually apply it to the glass in the bag. You can actually do both sides. And you can use excess resin if you want to. So we've got our glass in the bag, we've got the resin in the bag, now we take a squeegee and what we're essentially doing is pre-pregging or impregnating the fabric with the resin. And this might take a little bit of time to do depending on the type of resin that you're using, depending on the, uh, the weave of the fabric that you're using, it might take a little bit of time for that resin to get impregnated into the cloth. You can see it's starting to work here now. There are some dry spots and we'll kind of work those out. It's take just a little bit of time to do. You can see this is a very clean process because uh, virtually no resin is escaping. It's all in the bag. Uh, so there's no resin to build up on the squeegee, as you can see here. Uh, it's all encased in the bag. So it's a great clean way to uh, get glass ready for, uh, for layout. We'll keep on working that out. 
The other thing that's nice about prepreg materials or doing this kind of a homemade prepreg system is that uh, the glass is a certain thickness. So it acts like a thickness gauge. You can press down, you can only press down so far, and it helps to maximize the fiberglass to the resin content, which is important uh, in terms of saving weight. And as you can see, as we're getting the resin uh, impregnated into the fiberglass, uh, we have the excess on the outside of the bag. We can actually take that excess and with the squeegee, slide it off to the side. So we really maximize the resin to glass ratio in this sort of process as well. So we've got a lot of great things going for us. It's a very clean process uh, and, and we uh, maximize the resin to glass ratio. Now in the interest of time, I'm going to go to the next step, but really what you'd want to do is continue to work this resin until it is thoroughly wetted out and you've taken excess resin, as you can see here, squeegeed it off to the side. That's all excess resin that would have added weight to your layup and now you don't have to deal with that. Okay, so we have our glass uh, nicely wetted out. It's encased in plastic. Uh, it's not dripping or anything like that. Next step is to take uh, um, any sort of straight edge or, or, or a measuring device and you can actually draw the specific size piece of resin glass that you need for the part. And we do that right on the plastic. Okay, so that's the piece that we need uh, to lay up a joint. Now we take some scissors and we actually cut it right out in the bag. And again, the great thing about this process is that it's very clean, very neat. We don't have resin dripping out all over the place. It's just a fantastic way to get a handle on uh, using composites and at the same time optimizing that glass to resin ratio. Uh, with a typical hand layup, we shoot for 50-50 glass, uh, glass to resin. Uh, we can get 60-40 and sometimes even better than that. Okay, so we now, now we have a wetted piece of glass. Uh, so we have the fiberglass and the, com uh, and the resin uh, encased between two pieces of plastic. Next step is to carefully peel off one side of the plastic. Now this is the tough part because the plastic does tend to want to stick. The resin's a bit sticky. The plastic will tend to stick. If you have a, uh, a tweezers, that will make it a lot easier. So you can see I'm peeling away one piece of the plastic to expose the uh, fabric, wetted out fabric underneath. We can then take that wetted out fabric and apply it to our joint. And you can see this whole process, we're not dripping, uh, it's a very clean, neat process. We'll lay it up on our joint. We can use our squeegee to smooth it out, get rid of any air bubbles. In this particular layup, I have two layers of glass that we've, uh, we've uh, laid up all at one time. Next step is to take the second piece of glass, or plastic rather, and peel it off the, uh, the glass. And again, that's, that's the tough part. Should have brought my tweezers along today. Just about getting it here. There we go. So we peel off the 
outside plastic. Be very careful. You can see it's lifting up a little bit here. We want to peel it off in a way that we don't disturb the fabric underneath. That just takes a little bit of practice. Use your squeegee to smooth out any issues. So we end up with a really nice layup, a couple layers of glass, the resin. You can see very, very neat, not a lot of resin dripping around. An excellent way to uh, really get a handle on working with fiberglass and resin to deal with areas where you have perhaps overhangs, where you don't have to deal with trying to wet out a piece of glass and have resin dripping down, and an excellent way to kind of grab onto things, really, uh, really uh, control what's going on, and get the best results in terms of your resin to glass ratios. So another great hint. Hope that helps you out. Uh, take the next step and uh, attend an EA workshop where we have two-day courses on, on composites and other uh, areas of home building.